Dustin goes to Hollywood. I am Genesis, or uh, Mally. <laughs> and you're listening to the Silver Linings Playlist, which is a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's most bleak endings. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, this one, uh, not unlike all the other ones, but, uh, yeah. I just want to start <sighs> right off the bat and just say thank you for choosing this one. Well, let me tell about the goal of the podcast, and then we'll get into the movie. Um, yeah, well, I'm just... Shut up. Anyway. <laughs> so if this is your first time listening to our show, what we do is we like to find movies that have sad endings, bleak endings, weird, fucked up endings, however you want to categorize them. And we're building a playlist of all these movies that don't leave us feeling too great. And uh, we try to find the good in them. We try to have a positive attitude... Uh, after so much misery and this this week's movie is again like all our others no exception <laughs> <laughs> mally do you want was this your first time seeing this movie i okay i had never even heard of this movie until right. you suggested it i didn't look up anything about it and then i watched it and holy fucking shit yeah, I this a lot movie to say, huh? fucking rules. <laughs> Not what I expected you to say, but uh, it's gonna make for an interesting take. Um, we're actually doing something new this week. We decided to venture out and do the exact opposite of what we should do. We got a male guest to be on this very gender centric episode. Um, so, without further ado, our special guest for this week is Michael Overby. Introduce yourself, Michael. Hey everyone, it's a pleasure to be on the podcast, Dustin Malley. I'm really excited to talk about this movie. It seems like both of you have some pretty extreme views on um, <laughs> that. We're putting ends. it lightly. <laughs> opposite ends of the spectrum. I think I got points for both, so hopefully I can make the happy medium between the two of you. You can be a good referee, a good mediator, and <laughs> okay, all of okay. this. I'm I'm just gonna throw this out there. You guys are not gonna poke holes in this movie. Oh, but I will. This movie is <laughs> rock solid. <laughs> so, um, air yeah, so we know tight film. <laughs> we know Mally's relationship with this movie. Michael, was this your first time seeing this one? It was. I think I may have seen like a commercial for it way back in the day. But when you told me the title, I had no idea. No idea it was a Keanu Reeves movie. Um, Eli Roth, any of that stuff, just went into it you know, completely with fresh eyes, which I think was good. I feel like if I would have known that it was a Keanu Reeves movie, I would have right off the bat not not liked it, but definitely judged it. Mm -hmm. I don't think Keanu Reeves really is the best actor. And in this movie especially, he's not his best. Yeah, this movie he goes full Nicolas Cage at points. <laughs> okay, but um, seriously, who, who blackmailed Keanu Reeves into this movie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we'll talk about that for sure. Um so, Mally, we you, we know this movie in your in your word rules, um, and you said you had never heard of it before. Is this something you would want to re rewatch? Like, is this something you I would see yourself going back to? When okay, I didn't even like I knew literally nothing about this. Mm -hmm. So when Eli Roth's name popped up in the credits, I was all in. <laughs> well, see, I'm the total opposite. Okay. I go in with <laughs> this movie starts with. Fucking, how bad can it be? Okay, well, <laughs> let's 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 give the listeners some backstory before we get to the actual discussion. So, uh, the year is 2015. Director, as Mally mentioned, is Eli Roth, starring Keanu Reeves, Lorenzo Iso, Ana de Armas, Aaron Burns, Ignacia Alamond, and Colleen Camp. I know three of those names. <laughs> yeah, wait, that's the chick from Blade Runner, isn't it? Yes, it is. Talk she, about levels, man. Yeah, has definitely gone very far from this movie. I'll say that. <laughs> she went, she really upgraded. <laughs> um, so she followed but, up this soon-to-be classic with Blade Runner? Yeah, I, I don't know if there's any, I didn't look at her IMDb. I don't know if there's any projects in between there, but I mean, yeah. So, what a downgrade. Um, oh. Budget of two and a half million, and I can only find information that said this movie grossed thirty six thousand dollars worldwide. I'm assuming it had a real limited release. Um, so I checked that, and 
I think it was 36,000 domestic. There's this one website that a friend showed me. It's called like the numbers.com. Mm. And it basically is just an aggregate data site for all movies and like how they perform in global box offices. So I saw that it was 36,000 domestically, but I did see that it made 6.3 million internationally. Okay. Um, it looks like it did the best in the UK, 736,000, followed up by France. 650, Germany 640, and then Venezuela Venezuela at 470,000. I love that Michael's on the, the show for less than five minutes and already has done way more work <laughs> than we do for any episode. <laughs> Just a Google search. <laughs> um, and Sid's at a 35% on Rotten Tomatoes. Which I feel like is deserved. Uh, <laughs> well, Mally will have something different to say yeah, about that. Yeah, let's start with Mally first. I want to hear his side. <laughs> Oh, no, it absolutely deserves 35%. It's not a good movie, but I was entertained the entire, the entire goddamn time. Well, speaking of that, let's actually get into the trailer so we can discuss that. Oh, please. Okay. <laughs> Dad, are you sure you can't come to the beach with us? Dad, he needs to stay here and do some work. Bye, guys. Yes? Oh, we're so sorry to bother you, sir, but my phone got wet and she left hers at her house. Oh, I'm sorry. But if you want, you can come in and use my phone. Yeah. You're a lifesaver. Not everyone would let strangers into their houses. You don't look that dangerous. I'm not so sure. Could we maybe throw our clothes in your dryer just for like 10 minutes? Sure. How long have you and your wife been together? 14 years. Being with one person your whole life is going against nature. Well, when you love someone. Come on, Evan. Buckle your seatbelts. We may be encountering some turbulence. Guys, I have your clothes. They're pretty much dry. <laughs> Surprise. Oh, stop, stop, stop. I can't do this. I'm married. Yes, you can. I thought you guys left. Who made you breakfast? I'm not hungry. We can forget this habit. I made a mistake. Go. I'm calling the police. <laughs> Who's there? Cheating Evan. Cheating Evan who? Cheating eventually gets you killed. You've been a bad boy. Your family are victims of your perverted behavior. This is what happens when you break the rules, Evan. We have to punish you. I want to play hide and seek. Evan! Ready or not, here we go! You came out to me! What was I supposed to do? I'm glad we knocked on your door. <laughs> so i watched this trailer after watching the movie mm. so it didn't really impact me at all because i just wanted to watch the movie again <laughs> what's well then <laughs> yeah. okay i guess it did impact me then shit i mean it's it's pretty vague. I mean, it, but it's it's vague in enough that it doesn't really give you the full scope of what's going on, but it definitely has, like, that Strangers, Funny Games kind of vibe to it. Like, just house invasion. Yeah. Michael, what'd you think of this trailer? To me, it was... I watched it after. I didn't watch it before. Same here, yeah. And it was a... You don't have to watch the movie if you watch this trailer, I feel. like, yeah. Or at least the first 80% of it. It basically is just a super cut of everything that happens. Um, I didn't mm-hmm. think it was really that great as far as trailers go. I don't like it when they reveal that much. Yeah. And I felt like I kind of just got the whole feel of the movie to where if I wasn't that interested, it definitely wouldn't grip me. Well, I it's guess. it's a it's a bottle movie. So, I mean, like, I, this must have been super hard for a trailer to even get cut for this without giving it away. I mean, I don't know what you would put in this trailer either as a teaser or as a full-on trailer that doesn't give away what the movie is. Mm-hmm. More, fucking. More fucking. <laughs> More yeah. fucking. More fucking. That's the producer notes. Um, okay. So I, I think we should do this almost like a debate. 
So, Mally, you Wait, come at me with your strong points. Wait, okay. I just gotta, I gotta throw this out there preemptively. So, I watched this movie in order to prepare for this episode with four other people, my two roommates mm-hmm. and two friends. Mm-hmm. None of us had ever heard of it before except for one dude. And he only knew about it because he saw a bunch of scenes from this on a porn site. Yeah. I, I, somebody pointed that out to me that like all the sexual scenes are on Pornhub. <laughs> oh, they are on <laughs> Which there. is not surprising. <laughs> it's but, not surprising. So that being said, we decided... This is going to be like, let's make this movie fun. And of course, so that resulted in us Googling knock, knock drinking game. And it's out there. <laughs> and just let me run you through the rules real quick. All right. Okay. Rule number one. Drink every time the word daddy, sex or crazy is said. Oh, yeah. That's, so about, that's enough right there to send you to the hospital. You're done right there. <laughs> anytime, an yeah. app, anytime an Apple product is shown. Okay. Anytime Evan extends hospitality to the girls. Yeah, then you're you're dead before the end of the first act. <laughs> <laughs> anytime a record is played. Mm. Anytime Keanu's line delivery makes him sound like a douche. <laughs> that's an actual rule. Oh, man. Anytime a sexual pass is made at Evan. Yeah, dude, you're dead. Anytime Evan gets up to change seats. Anytime someone disrobes. Anytime someone states their occupation, and every time Evan either escapes for a minute or is captured again. So That's I feel like eighteen. I can think of. Like, I feel right like even playing with beer, you'd be out cold by the end of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> what I will say, going back to what you were talking about, Apple products. One thing I have been noticing in movies is portraying like text messaging. And how, like, it is kind of complicated because, you know, screens are usually big picture and cell phones are pretty small. I did enjoy how they used iMessage and, like, the simplicity of iMessage to, like, you could read it and also hear it at the same time. Mm -hmm. Just a side note of something I've been noticing in movies more. I really did appreciate the way they portrayed, like, text messages. Did they do that a lot? Because I remember, like, one time. I think it was... Two or maybe three scenes. Yeah, it's. I think it's two or three. Yeah, I didn't pay a whole lot of attention this time, to be honest with you. (laughs) Um, I watched this movie with a group of people too, probably equally divided, female and male, and it was more we were just shouting and friendly, but we were pretty much just arguing the entire movie. And I was definitely on the defensive of just Evan in general. I I was trying so hard to find the point where like you you can't talk about this movie without really diving into just writing 101 like the the full hero's journey or at least a simple three act structure which this movie does pretty flawlessly with the fades to black and everything um but I was trying to find the point at which Evan's character makes the fatal flaw, the reason all this happens to him. And the best you can get is when the actual intercourse happens the first time, right? Because, you know, Wait, we are, have you a talking about, are you friend. talking about the are you talking about the threesome? Yeah, because that th- the editing of that threesome was the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was fucking amazing. Like. It's it's pretty intense. It's like this is okay. This was the highest budget porno ever made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, all I could think of is after finding out that Eli Roth is actually married to the girl Genesis. Yeah, that had to what? Been. It's it's like a really <laughs> weird cuckolding. It's like Wait. when um what? He's married to Genesis. Yeah, it's <laughs> you it's, know that. <laughs> no, <laughs> holy shit, dude! It's like the um. The scene in Spring Breakers where Harmony Kareen's wife is like, sh- fl- like sh- basically feeling herself up and telling this guy that she he's never gonna get it. <laughs> it's like this is some weird cuckolding thing that's going on. <laughs> oh my god! Um, that adds a whole other layer to it. So what I was saying though is like it's hard for me to find the the point where which Keanu's character d- basically he hits that. A uh, fatal flaw that in that that moment where he deserves what he gets. Um, I mean, he does make mistakes in this movie, but 
this this is why I said up top that we should have had a female on this episode to get some perspective, but we didn't. Um, I, I found myself just defending him in every step of the way for the most part. I feel like he like he does a good job the way he is like, oh, you know, holding off like they're obviously flirting lightly, but he's pretty solid about it. Like he he didn't go into this like opening the door like, oh, my God, this is, you know, jackpot. He seemed like a pretty authentic dude who could you really say that you wouldn't make the same, you know, mistake like I th- you did? The problem with this movie is I don't know what theme or moral is trying to teach me. Because mm-hmm. as far as I can tell, just based on what's on the paper and what I see on screen is that Keanu's fatal flaw is his hospitality mm-hmm. his or his gullibility, whichever you want to call it. Um so step by step from what I see, you know, the the steps that he takes, he, number one, he invites the girls in. Number two, he uh, offers them robes. So he dries their clothes. Number three, he calls them a car. Um, I don't even, I think that's pretty much it for the most part. I mean, has it, wait, hang on. I, I want to stop when we talk about him calling the car. Has anyone ever actually waited 45 minutes for an I know. Before? I'm wondering if that's just because it's the Hollywood Hills. Um, by the way, this movie was shot in Chile from what I understand. Um, but yeah, it's set, it's set place in L.A. I could – I mean obviously it's a little bit exaggerated to be in the movie. But I do feel like in a really bad you know, rainstorm at 1, 2 in the morning, it could be difficult. Yeah, because nobody in L.A. knows how to drive when it starts raining. <laughs> it also didn't need to be 45 minutes though. Like it could have just as easily been 22, That whole scene minutes, went know? through in like 10 minutes. Yeah. Like it, it didn't need to be 45. I'm just saying he checked Uber and didn't – he didn't even check Lyft. <laughs> he had options. Or a taxi he or had anything. options. Um, but yeah, it was super weird because, like I said, I was watching this this with a group of people, and you know, all, all the people that were on the offensive saying that he, he gets what he deserves were saying, "Oh, well, he shouldn't have invited them in. He shouldn't have known better. He shouldn't have taken their clothes and dried them." But it it, it made me start thinking, and it, it could I could just be my pure naivety, but I was just thinking, is that because we've gotten to a point and if you just want to call it society, like where a, a, a grown man doing something nice for younger women is just inappropriate flat out. Or is it just because, like I said, gullibility is a sin? Like, is that what's the fatal flaw here? Is it because he's too nice or because he's too gullible? And I don't know if the movie ever comes down one way or the other to where I can justifiably say, yeah, he got what he deserved. Yeah, you're, it does. There's no clear distinction between mm-hmm. the two, and it's hard to tell. Truthfully, he seems very respectful. Like, to his significant other, like if his wife were to see this, he handled it pretty maturely, never really, like, pushed too far. And in my opinion, I liked that scene when they came in because it felt believable. Mm-hmm. I feel like the moment it stopped and I noticed that like, oh, somebody wrote this was when I think it's Anna de Armas goes out like just mentions, oh, our friend is such a starfish. Like she just lays there during sex. <laughs> and to me, that was super weird because I'm like, hey, who the hell talked? Like, how would you know that about your friend? Especially to a stranger. Especially to a stranger. And that's when it was like, okay, like they pushed it a little bit too far where it was building up pretty nicely. Yeah. Like, you know, the, inevi- the inevitable climax of what was going to happen. <laughs> the climax. Um, yeah, I that's a reason I just this I've I've said it before. This movie is literally my most hated movie. I hate this movie with a fiery passion. Just I don't know. It's not a terribly it's not a terrible movie. I'll give it that. It's watchable. But some of the choices Eli Roth makes as a director and then the, some choices the editor makes, some choices he made when he was writing it, it just it feels like he's trying to do his Eli Roth thing, which is to take the expectation and subvert it like he did with Hostel and like he did with Cabin Fever. But it just it doesn't work for me. Like he's trying to do funny games. He's trying to do The Strangers. But this movie, its third act, to me, felt like it should have lent more left. uh it should have lent more to Last House on the Left, where he gets his revenge on these girls. But Keanu's so stupid throughout this whole movie that, like, every decision he makes post the threesome is just stupid. Like, can we talk about the gun? What did, The gun had no real... 
No use. He was going to break Wait, the gun okay, yeah, out no. of that pot, but he was still tied up. So I don't know what the <laughs> hell he was going with that one. Why? What? Of uh, okay. Of all people, does Evan Keanu Reeves' character does he seem like the dude that's gonna keep a gun in the house? No. Did no. that bother anyone else, Not or was it all. just me? Mm-mm. He also doesn't seem like the type that would light up a pipe either. Like the smoke weed in the middle of the night. Like he's got to stash it away from his kids. He's he tries so hard in that first act to sell the idea that he's a good father. Oh my god! To make the fall that much more impactful, but that- it it. Feels- <laughs> It feels like he's never interacted with children in his yeah, life. Yeah, it's like he's had five minutes of like, this is what a child looks like. He, What was the thing he kept doing? Like, monster sad. That yeah. was so weird to me. <laughs> that, no, that that monster impression is what convinced me that Keanu Reeves was blackmailed. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. holy shit, dude. It's, it's total what dad mode. What was that? It's dad mode without the experience of the dad. <laughs> um, so, it, it, I, Wait, I okay. hate doing this argument because it feels so easy to make and it never really proves a point. But I oh God. got into this argument with the people I was watching it with. But the scene where he first opens the door and sees the girl is there standing in the rain. If let's just just play along with me here. But if, if the, the genders were switched. And the movie played forward from that from that scene on. Does the opinion sway to whether the the protagonist deserves what they get? Like, if you can see, imagine a grown woman opening the door and two young males have uh, being at the door, which is basically funny games. Um, did, do you still feel the same way you do about this character? Like, I don't know if it's, if it holds up that way. It turns more into like a tale of reality. Well, I guess. That's not opposed to what actually happened in this film, but it's just super weird to me that, like, everyone that I watched this movie with were like, oh, fuck him. He got what he deserved. He was a piece of shit. He should have done this. He shouldn't have done that. And I'm like, no one could give me an answer when it was swapped, like, if it was justified or not. Huh. I mean, did you not consider that? Because I feel like that's, like, a very obvious, like, go-to argument for this. Dude, I was too into <laughs> you thought about you thought about this movie so I was, much harder I, I was than ignoring i did the tits and just focusing on the <laughs> i was i was too distracted by the fact that this movie okay i have a theory about how this film was written mm-hmm. every line of dialogue was only put in the script if it worked as a standalone that's what she said joke <laughs> <laughs> so basically michael scott wrote the script <laughs> i'm honestly i am fucking convinced like this line for example i know i can take the both of you that's what she said it works <laughs> it works <laughs> you just pick any line in the <laughs> um you can literally take any line especially with lines like fuck me like you fuck your little daughter okay yeah that about- one's a little weird i mean it's obvious that she was molested right that's what the whole point of that scene is but or is never, she just pretending? It never, like, touches on it again. I thought, like, that would be her flaw, like, and he would learn how to exploit that to try and maybe pit Belle against Genesis, and it never really resurfaces after that one just... No, no, a better movie would have found a way to do See, that. that's what I thought, too. <laughs> what was that, Melly? No, I, I was agreeing with him. I thought that was going to be, like, utilized in some way mm-hmm. after that scene, but no, it doesn't. He just awkwardly stumbles out of the room as he's frantically pulling up his pants. Well, there's a lot of s- scenes like that in this movie or things that should pay off that don't. Like, when he, the Genesis and, uh, I forget the other girl's name, when they're outside. Bell. 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 When Genesis and Bell are outside dealing with his assistant that just died and he tries to get the iPad all he does is put his feet over it while he's trying to FaceTime his wife. Like, they're not going to see that. And she, Genesis immediately notices, like, why are you trying to FaceTime your wife? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> the same thing with the gun. It's basically Chekhov's gun. You introduce a gun in the movie and it never goes off. It's never used. He's. I don't even think he even, no one even gets pistol whipped with it. Like, it, there's just so many weird things that could have been cut from this movie that didn't do anything. Like, there was no time for the tension building of the iPad thing to build it as soon as he tries to call her they come back in and she catches him like that's it <laughs> and there really was no point to lewis the no her his wife's assistant i think is who just happened to have was. asthma which like that's fine i guess like a little bit like you know it's clever they notice they take it but 
he went from the best character the moment he's just like, fuck you two ghetto ass hoes. I'm from Oakland and like completely reverses on mm-hmm. his personality. Oh, I love that. Dude, he, that was the best line of <laughs> yeah, the whole exactly. fucking yeah, movie. You know, right you know what it made it me was, think of is, just, is you Lil Rel from wrong Get Out. fucking tree. <laughs> he, he's basically Lil yeah. Rel's character from Get Out that immediately does Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. Like, Lil Rel gets out at the end because he's smart, and this character's smart, and then just fails. I mean, he immediately goes from the smartest character to the dumbest character. They, what, they're like throwing the the inhaler over his mm-hmm. head like he's a child. Like I would just if people were doing that and I needed it, I would knock one of them out. Like yeah. they're clearly giving you enough reason to do so. You don't need to jump back and forth like a child at an elementary school. That was a sad way to kill off that character when they could have just oh, you know, where maybe it- thrown it on the ground and crushed it. And he just where it you know, just turned into an episode of Scooby Doo all of a sudden. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I wrote down this Dude, note. I thought like when Lewis popped up, I thought he was gonna like handle shit, and I was so psyched. Yeah. And then forty five seconds later, he's dead. I know. That's, I'm saying nothing really pays off in this movie. There's no real good tension building after the first act. Um, I wrote this note down. And I got to remember what the context was, but I put. This movie is the equivalent of some asshole pretending to punch you and then saying the "Why are you flinching?" <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that the whole point was Wait. like that these women take advantage of of Evan's gullibility and like, of course, like abuse him mentally, emotionally, physically, and it's like as soon as Evan gets the upper hand, he's just taken right back. Like, <laughs> he just loses. He it. never. He never has a moment of triumph in this movie. The only thing he gets is the one time he punches Bell, and also gets laid. But I mean, that's, <laughs> that's after the, after the first tag. That's like the only time he gets the upper hand on him ever. That was the was that. I wanted to go back mm-hmm. just a little bit yeah. about useless side characters. That other one, the neighbor. Was, yeah, the neighbor that shows up. Another completely pointless like scene that it's really just, didn't do yeah, anything. It's just there just to further f- like fuel the whole, oh, he's a piece of shit. Or at least he appears to be a piece of shit. That's all that's there for. Um, yeah. Okay, so the, the, all right, that side that side character neighbor, that's the one hole you're going to poke in this film. You know what it made me think of though, Mally? Just, uh, of a past I'm episode, kidding. Hard Candy, with uh, Susan O, who, or Sandra O, sorry. Oh, that, shit. It's basically the yeah. same thing. Like, yeah, no, you're but pretty much spot on. In Hard Candy, that character serves a purpose because she ends up calling the police. Like, this this is literally there just to be like, yeah, further fuel to the fire of how much it, you suck. And he could have easily done something like blinked, you know, in a suspicious way to I'm notify under her duress. or like call the police kind of <laughs> right? thing. Right, yeah. I did see on IMDb, though, that that woman i think her name was vivian Mm. the actress colleen camp Mm. she was in another movie or she was the producer of the movie that was what this one was based on i forget what i read but i think it's called death games and it's almost the same exact plot this is just like a 2015 version so maybe it was like a little wait is this a remake it's it's not a remake but if you read like the wikipedia synopsis like i did it's the same movie hmm Really? Mm-hmm. And that woman is huh. in that movie in some capacity. So I feel like it was more of an Easter egg, but again, a waste ah, of money. Ah, okay. I'm going to I'm gonna defend this movie in small increments at some point, but I still want to keep just, just kicking it while it's down right now. Um, I, this movie is obviously, I think, supposed to be a joke. I think it's supposed to be on that same level of like black comedy that – Nicholas Cage swears by with the Wicker Man that it's supposed to be funny, but I just <laughs> we let's just go ahead and start talking about the ending because that's what we're here for anyway. So the girls get the upper hand on them and they decide they're just, or at least they tell them they're just going to kill them. They're going to execute them at sunset. They dig a huge fucking hole, which is impressive for like how much time they have. Um, they tie Keanu up. They give him a stupid haircut, which I got to say, even with his quote-unquote bowl cut haircut they give him, he Didn't still look looks pretty bad. fucking good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't mind that haircut. Well, no, um, my favorite shot is mid-haircut when he just looks like Ringo Starr for like a <laughs> split second. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they roll him out in the in the hole at 
like Don. They bury him up to his neck, so he's just his head's poking out. They pretend like they're gonna smash his head in with a uh, like a tombstone looking thing. They don't. Um, earlier in the movie, Genesis filmed uh, Evan and Bell having sex, and then she posts the video on his Facebook so all his friends and family can see. And then they decide just to leave him there. Um, it's just. I don't know. And then, and then, of course, the very end, the, the wife and kids come home and see the house destroyed. And I'm presumably fine Evan there. And I guess the implication is that their marriage ends. But it's such a flimsy idea because, I mean, Michael, you brought this up. But there's, like, so much evidence of, like, their presence, <laughs> like, that they were obviously the oh, ones. Oh, yeah. They didn't. They did not wipe down a damn thing. They had no, They're going to get caught. <laughs> it's easy. It ends, and and I get that it's supposed to be like, oh, he got caught, and like now he's no longer gonna have his family. Totally looks like he got raped. Yeah. The entire house is vandalized. He's tied up. You know, he's buried, buried up outside to his shoulders. <laughs> to the like where I get it, but it just if they wanted to go with that kind of ending, it should have been different. It shouldn't have been that. I didn't feel like right. he was really. You it know, ended abruptly. Yes. Um. Yeah. Which did anyone read the comments on like that one shot where you can see the Facebook video? Did yeah, anyone did. read the comments yeah, that I people? Because they are amazing. Unfriended. Yeah, is one of them. <laughs> that's a good one. No, no, my favorite one was just simply you liked it. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> who who would comment that? I mean, you like know. that's so. I mean, that's hilarious. Don't get me the, wrong. The whole but, like. The comment above it is, my kids can see this. Yeah. <laughs> and then just, you liked it. <laughs> and it was, okay, so I, I only know this because I, I went back to the actual scene where they recorded the video and then the ending scene with him buried. And there are inconsistencies. If you really? go back and you watch the scene where Ana de Armas mounts him and she's recording her like doggy style. And yeah. then Ana de Armas does that weird dog screeching thing. Yeah. He does not look like he's enjoying it. Truly, like. <laughs> Good to him, you know, I mean, Macy's able to do that, but he doesn't say, like, okay, he doesn't give any verbal affirmation to her no. doing what she's doing. He just grunts and looks like he's not enjoying it. If you listen to the video at the very end when he's, like, sitting there tied up, you hear Keanu Reeves in the video say, like, okay, or, like, yeah, fuck me like you're a little whore. And he doesn't actually say that in the scene. No. Oh, so that's shit. just something I noticed because I wanted to make sure that those matched up and they didn't. Yeah. Which further reinforces the fact I could see him not – being as you know screwed as the movie tries to suggest yeah right right i think by the way i think the whole you liked it thing i think that's actually him liking the video by mistake because like he gets his hands out of the dirt and he tries to reach for the phone <laughs> and it topples over i think that's him liking the video and it popping up saying you like okay. this which is even funnier. honestly that's kind of that's <laughs> funnier <laughs> that's why i say i think this movie's a joke i think it's supposed to be taken lightheartedly but um the, the implications of this movie to me are way scarier than what actually happens because what the movie to me is saying is that these girls can do whatever they want to this guy and they're going to get away with it because of how it looks, which is literally what the video scene to me is supposed to imply. It's supposed to imply, oh, look, he took advantage of them or he enjoyed it. But it's obvious evidence that he's raped and that he's been like assaulted. <laughs> like it's there's there's so much evidence against the women and like I don't, everything just seems so convenient like the neighbor shows up in an inopportune time but doesn't see him leave with them when he tries to drop them off earlier in the movie like well they just totally ransack his house then and i want to comment on this oh um i brought some oh, hubba yes. bubba bubble tape for dustin and i to enjoy uh, sorry, I couldn't get you any, Mally. <laughs> Shit. There, the next morning when he goes into the kitchen, what the <laughs> fuck was going on there? Like, they were like raccoons. Like, she's flipping the pancakes. What? One of the armists is literally One of them is eat- licking a lollipop that has peanut butter on it. What the f- Like, One I, of I, them I, is eating out of a dog bowl. Yeah. I can exactly. comment on that. That That's... that's are literally doing shots of maple syrup. Yeah. <laughs> They're doing the super trooper, basically. Um... This is where I was saying I was going to actually give this movie some credit. Um, and actually, our mutual friend, M- Mally Dillon, pointed this out to me. But that that scene happens right 
after the end of Act 1, right after the three somewhere it fades to black and they go to sleep. Um, the entire first act, those girls are way... I don't want to say punching above their weight mature-wise, but they're very mature. They're very soft-spoken. They're very precise. They're they're deliberate. And then right after the threesome, right after they blackmail them, they have the the act the act of the threesome as blackmail. They just turn into their true selves, which are children. They're actual children, which it sticks through to the end of the movie. They don't know what they're doing, which is could point towards why there's so much evidence at this crime scene because they don't know any better. And that uh, is just further huh. implied by this scene that they're, they're fucking chugging syrup, their food everywhere. It's like raccoons. Like, it was almost like you wake up the next morning and raccoons are just <laughs> destroying your kitchen. Because, yeah, who, A, drinks syrup out of a bottle? Like, that doesn't make any sense. And then, again, the peanut butter and the lollipop, those are two entirely different types of food <laughs> that don't go together. That was just – that was such it's a strange funny. scene for mm-hmm. me. It's funny you refer to them as raccoons because, like, later she does her makeup with the big, with like, the black raccoon eyes. circles right, around right. her that eyes. And weird. that's all I could fucking think about. <laughs> what – can someone explain that to me, please? I Like I like, said, they're why children. Why was her makeup like that? It's the same reason they, they fucking paint dicks and tits on everything. They're children. That's what the movie's trying to say. They are children. Whether or not they are actual physically that age, that I think they say that she might be 15 at one point. Or Which, like, it, pff, yeah, right. Come on. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, that's where the movie, like I said, it's it, the implications are scarier than the actual thing. Because the implication is that these girls can do whatever they want, and no matter – what the evidence is to contradict it, he's probably going to go to jail no matter what. And yeah, that's just that's why I wonder about the gender swap here. Like, if it was flipped around, no, I mean, you always hear just like stories about like, oh, these female teachers sleeping with their students and stuff like that, but you usually get the typical male response of attaboy for the victim of the crime. It's never. Nice. Uh, but yeah, exactly. There's a whole South Park episode dedicated yeah. to it. Knock, knock, Mally. That's not funny. <laughs> no, you're supposed to say who's there. Oh. No, that, uh, yeah, that would actually make a lot more sense. Let's try it again. Knock, knock. Who's there? Two knocks now. Knock, what? knock. <laughs> I'm so confused. This is going fucking terrible. Okay, anyways, if you're listening to this this far into the episode, you're now reached the secret part where we give you a free contest code where you can win a Blu-ray, no strings attached. All you have to do is go on our subreddit right now, reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist, find the official discussion thread for Knock Knock, and leave this comment that I'm about to give you as a comment on that thread. And we'll pick a winner. Uh, a winner. We'll pick wow. a winner uh, and then send you uh, a free Blu-ray. Real simple. So... The contest code for this week is bubble bass and free pizza. Leave that as a comment on the thread. And like we said, we'll pick a winner and send you out a free Blu-ray. Real simple. Sweet. Okay. But what, all right, one last thing real quick. that Because it bothered me. It really has, it has nothing to do with, with the story or anything. But did, the, did Keanu's yellow fucking teeth bother anyone oh, else? Entire, his, I didn't I even notice no it. Way, oh, it's the... Teeth, I look at usually like when I'm meeting someone for the first time, and there are a lot of shots where his are very evident. I didn't even his notice teeth that. Are, like fucked up. I didn't they notice. Are very yellow. They are so yellow. Do you know what I did notice? Is this movie is only a year before John Wick, which explains the long hair and yeah. it. First of all, we got to talk yeah. about his beard. What the fuck Wait, was going so on with his beard? <laughs> we're we're not like we're are we not. Sure. Like, could this be a prequel to John Wick? That's my next question. <laughs> I, I thought about that too. This takes this takes place. Like, like is his this first is this what fucking made him snap and go off? <laughs> did, but, can, they did take his dog. Speaking about snapping, we have to talk about that monologue that he does. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh let's actually, my god. Um, let's let's Please. listen to the monologue and then we'll talk about it. Death. Death. You're going to kill me. You're going to fucking kill me. Why? Why? Because I fucked you? You fucked me. You fucked me. You came to my house. You came to me. 
I got you a car. I brought you your clothes and you took a fucking bubble bath. You wanted it. You wanted it. You came out to me. What was I supposed to do? You sucked my cock. You both fucking sucked my cock. It was free pizza. Free fucking pizza. It just shows up at my fucking door. What am I supposed to do? We're flight attendants. Come on, fuck us. No one will know. Come on, fuck us. Oh, two sums, three sums. It doesn't matter. Starfish, husbands. You don't give a fuck. You'll just fuck anything. You'll just fuck anything. Well, you lied to me. I'm trying to help you. I let you in. I was a good guy. I'm a good father. And you just fucking fuck me? What? Now you're gonna kill me? You're gonna kill me? Why? Why? You should fuck me? What the fuck? Fuck, fuck. This is fucking insane. See, see, so, so that's like in the beginning when you were talking about the Nick Cage moment. <laughs> that's totally the Nick Cage moment. Yeah, yeah. Just, there are so... I'm sorry. That is the best monologue of all fucking time. <laughs> it is amazing. He calls someone a fucking bitch cunt. <laughs> pizza. I don't know. Ah, it's amazing. What was the free pizza line about? <laughs> are you fucking no, pizza? Think... You show up at my door. <laughs> I don't know, man. It, it's literally. It said. It says you. Oh God! What is the exact line? You. <laughs> you both fucking sucked my cock. It was free pizza, free fucking pizza. <laughs> <laughs> what you know the what? fuck is he on about? In that monologue, he the first part of it, he basically explains what I was trying to say the entire time about why I, I'm, I'm on his side for most of this movie. It's you, you fucked me. We can agree the sex is mutual once it actually happens. I'm fine with that. That is a flaw in his character. But he lists off. He's like, I got you a car. I brought you clothes. I, like, he let him. He was a perfect gentleman. He may have overstepped his bounds in the gullibility aspect. He, he kind of knew what he was getting into, but he was smart enough to be reserved. You know, he's, please don't touch me. I have a wife. You know, when he comes into the bathroom, he covers his eyes up. And he's a like com- a very accommodating host. In regard, he's, like, oh, absolutely. Everything they're they're asking him is very sensible. You know, hey, can we dry our clothes? It's really wet out there. And he's like, yeah, sure. Luckily, I have these two fancy robes for you. <laughs> like, he does go out of his way, which you can't blame him. If two girls like that show up at one a.m. in the morning, and you can help them, and you know, you do, and that's yeah. what he did. Mm-hmm. It was just, you know, I don't know this. This movie like started at like a three and then shot up to like a fucking eleven immediately. <laughs> well, you know, you know what would fix this movie for me? What would make me feel less, um, like I have to defend Evan here is a movie like this where like oh someone stays home they don't go on the family trip or whatever. The wife would have a problem with it, like if the wife were to object to. Evan staying home and not going on the family trip, I could see that's a character flaw. He kind of deserves some kind of punishment for his 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 arc. But right, the 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 wife has no problem. She's like, yeah, it's okay, honey, stay home, get some work done. We'll see you in a couple of days. So he's even he's even a good father and a good husband in that aspect. Before these girls even show up, like if it was Jingle all the way. And the fucking husband <laughs> is working too much that it's he's neglecting his kids. I'd, I'd feel more like, oh, he his character deserves getting some kind of punishment. But it doesn't. He's a great father by this weird interaction we have with him in the beginning. Fucking chocolate cake in bed. You can't get much more good father than that. Yeah. He's a good husband. He's loyal. He's faithful. He has a good job. Like, I don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed to – why I'm supposed to root f- – I don't know if I'm supposed to root for the girls or, or Evan. I don't know. I can't t- – I couldn't tell you. I think you're just supposed to root for the fucking movie itself. Just the fun of it. That's why I think this movie's a joke. It, it doesn't – I don't know if it wants me to pick sides. I'm just saying there's – this movie has to be taken as a joke. Like you can – there's no way this was written seriously. Like I just can't – then again, it is fucking Eli Roth, so never mind. <laughs> to me, I haven't. I know Eli Roth from like Inglorious Bastards, and I've seen some of. I haven't seen his work. I'll say that this is the first like Eli Roth movie I sat in the beginning, watched the entire thing. 
super overrated to me. I don't know. I've just hostile, I, in my opinion, I've seen parts of that. And to me, that relied more on like shock gore yeah. value than like an actual. Substantial oh, absolutely. Movie. It did. Yeah, he's he's got a niche and it's very it's like Tarantino. It's very particular. Um, mm-hmm. I've seen a few of his movies. I just came down on the fence. I just don't like him uh, as a director or a writer. I think he's fine as an actor. He's great as the Bear Jew mm-hmm. in Inglorious Bastards. I haven't seen Cabin Fever in a while, so I don't even know if it holds up. I didn't enjoy Hostel. I didn't enjoy this. I didn't enjoy Green Inferno. Which is so weird because I feel like he does kind of have a cult following. Like, I don't know. His name is known. Like, I, I haven't seen his movies, but I know Eli Roth films. He you typically know? has good premises. I'll give him that. Wait, what about Cabin Fever? Have like you I said, seen I, Cabin I, don't, Fever? I haven't seen it in a while. I don't know if it holds up. C- cabin fever i will cabin fever solid but after that i'm gonna be honest he started to lo- like the first hostel it was different i'll give it that the mm-hmm. sequels i could have done completely without and yeah green inferno meh green inferno was a huge disappointment to me because of all the hype and like the delay but this movie was fucking awesome <laughs> all right um, I'm still in to go back to taking this movie like a joke i feel like the first act is it's not. It's, like, reputable. it's kind of yeah. It's it's not good. That opening sequence with him and the kids and the wife and it was like I understand horror movies or thrillers. I guess is this one are supposed to begin where everything's fine, but the moment they wake up the next morning, it just basically becomes a joke. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. And I I I kind of lost all. I didn't feel like there was much danger after that. Like yeah. how many times does he not listen to them and like, all right, you know, don't leave the house. We're going to play hide and seek leaves the house, falls like an idiot and gets caught up. Yeah. We're going to call your wife. You got to tell her what you're doing. And he just starts yelling, help, help. As if that's like, I don't understand how that was a logical response. And then they even said, we didn't actually call anyway. Cause we knew you could do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She hung up immediately. And He's so, by so the, stupid. By the end of it, I just didn't really feel like he was, Going like when they had the whole, uh, was it block of marble or something yeah. above his head? I was like, okay, they're not because they have he hasn't listened to them multiple times prior to this, and they've let him go. You know? Basically, anytime they say they're going to do something, they do they they don't do it. Mm-hmm. They do the exact opposite. Yeah. Um, but is that part of their game though? I, I like I said, man, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I can't. This movie oh, no, doesn't I have. I don't know the answer to that question. I was just going to ask, see what you said. Yeah, the, the movie doesn't pick a lane. <laughs> it's just, it's frustrating because there is a good movie in here somewhere, which maybe it's the, the movie it's originally based off of, but it's not this. Um, yeah. For trying to tackle, if this movie, if it's the movie's intention, for trying to tackle the gen, the obvious gender issues that we're starting to get away from, as, as a species, but the obvious gender issues that we have that this movie is trying to tackle, it, like I said, if I, if I knew if it was a joke, if this movie was supposed to be a joke, it'd be different, but I don't. And I'm betting Eli Roth intended this to be a real true thriller, a true, true horror movie. And so it's hard for me to take it seriously. And like I said, if the roles were swapped, I don't know what this movie would look like or if it would work. Um, I don't, I think it would be taken way more as horror thriller if it was swapped and less thriller comedy, black comedy like it is now. So I don't know. I I feel like I deserve an explanation. <laughs> God damn you, Eli Roth. <laughs> um, one last little thing I want to get to um, before we can start talking about the silver linings is the character of Lewis. I feel like. That is the character we as an audience should want Evan to be by the third act. Like he should just flat out be like, I've had it with these girls, you know, whether I get caught or not or blackmailed or not, I don't care. I'm going to deal with them. Basically, like I said, turning into the last house on the left where he gets some because like I said, he never is up in this movie. He never gets a one up on them. And if it is, it's very short lived to the point where it doesn't even count. When he smacks Anadar, I was like, he just left her and then went after the other Basic one. Basic horror movie tropes. You would just, I, I don't understand why you just wouldn't knock yeah. her out, you know? Like, this is a, at this point, it's a home invasion and you're being held against your will. 
the whole restraints and reservations you had about how you're going to proceed like the next morning. Because they're, they're women, there. yeah. Yeah, like, but I feel like at that point it's just out the door. Yeah. And I feel, I feel like if Evan were to take the Lewis route and just directly deal with these girls as they are, he would have been successful or at least he would have got the one up on at least one of them. Mm-hmm. I feel like they're less of a threat if there's – which then again, they're, they're teenage girls. I mean – they're not that difficult to handle. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I got the whole fork in the, like, surgery. He had that um, that stitch up on his, like, right shoulder, I guess, to defeat him. But I'm still, like, you could have clobbered her, so like, you, at least you, once or twice. You mentioned that to me before we recorded, and I f- totally forgot he even had surgery or they implied that he had recently had surgery. In the very beginning during that really campy – lovey dovey bed rolling scene. Yeah. The wife like rolls onto his shoulder shoulder and he's just like, oh like uh oh. and I can tell it hurts him and that's fine. That's a good setup. But he could have easily overpowered them. And then especially seeing like John Wick for this kind of movie, you're like, God damn it. Like, yeah. <laughs> especially because he looks like John Wick in the movie. See, yeah. I completely missed the shoulder like I I actually rewatched this because I watched it the other day, then rewatched it again today. I missed mm-hmm. the shoulder injury setup at the beginning the first time. So yeah, I was too. so confused when it showed that cut or scar on his shoulder. I was like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> and then someone explained it to me that I caught it again this time. But I think the reason I missed it the first time was because I was like waking up again because I fell asleep during the 10-minute opening credit sequence. Yeah, it's so pretentious that that shot through the house. Those credits were so long. It was so boring. They spent a lot of time in that hallway, I noticed, throughout the movie. In the very beginning, it's that long tracking shot, but they revisit the hallway on, I'd say, three, maybe four different occasions. Like I said, it's pretentious. Oh, yeah. It's very, very weird. I don't know why the DP was so, like, partial to that part of the house, but that's, again, where he charges through and tries to get Genesis when she stabs him, and then there are multiple other, like, just crawls through that hallway. I don't know. Um, I don't want to come down... Either side of this movie about the the gender discussion because I'm not qualified. Um, I would love to get some female input on this. Um, we'll plug our subreddit at the end. I would love to hear some females tell me what they think about this issue, um, how they felt about the movie. I'd love to hear that. Um, but yeah, I got well, that'd be great. Yeah, I got really nothing else to say about the movie before we get into our silver linings. Michael or Mally, do you guys have anything else you want to talk about? You do have to compliment this movie. You said earlier that once you were done beating oh, it did. like a dead horse. I did. I complimented. I said that the switch from the first act to the second act with the girl's behavior, I thought was solid writing. Okay, gotcha. All right. Good good representation, <laughs> good direction on how they switched, for sure. Okay, but Dustin, question. Would you recommend this film to someone? <sighs> You know, it's tough because, like I said, I I rarely I've, – I've never walked out of a movie. I've very rarely shut off a movie. I've never finished a movie and been as furious as I was with this movie. And like I said, I was furious <laughs> because I felt like the character did not deserve anything that happened to him. And then, of course, got no retribution. And it was just – you know, we we the whole point of the show is we like movies that leave us not feeling well or that end on a sad or fucked up note. But usually, it's earned, and I feel like this movie doesn't earn its ending. And the ending itself is just weird and doesn't fit to me. But I think I think I'd have to recommend it a light recommend. It has to be a what your why you want to see it like. Same with, just, like, just, The Wicker just Man. Just a light recommendation. Yeah, it's a light recommend. It's like The Wicker Man for me. It's a good airplane movie. Okay. I feel like, you know, <laughs> if you had nothing else to watch, the movie selection isn't all that good. I didn't I didn't hate this movie. It seems like, you know, you obviously were furious. Mally enjoyed it because it was fun. I do also recognize the fun aspects of it. I didn't have a bad time watching this movie. Again, I stopped taking it seriously the moment she was eating peanut butter lollipops and yeah. she was squirting syrup into her mouth. <laughs> But it wasn't bad. Like, if you're just flipping through the channels and something's on and you like Keanu Reeves or something, it's not horrible. It's just not going to be remembered in five years. (laughs) I I wish I could turn my brain off and enjoy this movie for what it is as just like, uh, oh, a fucked up home invasion movie. But I can't just because, like I said, I don't know what the movie is trying to tell me or what it wants me to 
to think of what where it's trying to lead me because I don't think it knows. So it's it's just frustrating for me to watch. What about you, Mally? Do you recommend? I'm assuming you do. Oh, absolutely. People need to see <laughs> this work of art because it is so fucking ridiculous. Um, unlike Dustin, I am very good at just turning my brain off and watching something. <laughs> And I definitely did that for this, and I enjoyed the hell out of it. It, I mean, don't me wrong, I spent 50% of the time laughing hysterically and probably mm-hmm. missed some important stuff. The other 50% <laughs> just echoing lines out loud because of how ridiculous they were. But it's definitely, like, this is not a movie you watch, like, like you said it's a good airplane movie. I would not be able to watch this on an airplane. I would be, like, trying to, like... <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was sarcasm. I would just be <laughs> laughing hysteric. I'd be, like, that dude, like, nudging the guy next to me, like, dude, dude, did you see what fucking just happened? That was amazing. <laughs> like, this is a great, like, if you're just hanging out with, like... Like I said, I watched this with four other people, and we had a hell of a time watching this movie. It was so much fun. It's but, definitely better to watch in a group for sure. Oh yeah, it's definitely a, it's definitely yeah, a group I would, film. I would be so distracted if it was just me. I was the first like ten minutes. I was just on my phone because I was like, "Where is this going? This is taking way too long." Yeah, yeah. But well, I, I mean, the say, first ten minutes are just credits anyway. So <laughs> yeah, looking at it like at moments of laughter, the end scene with Keanu Reeves buried with just his head above the ground. It's I, so that, funny. That last like six minutes, I could not stop fucking crying. It's funny. It was I'll give it that. It is funny. <laughs> like just sitting there with a mouth in his gag, like, no, no, no. I will I will say if this movie didn't feature Lorenzo Iso and Ana de Armas, I might not be interested. Oh, of course not. They were they were definitely the selling point of this movie. And like they they get outshined by Keanu, like who like as, this might be his worst acting, like. But then again, I can't tell because I don't know if it's a joke or not. If he's being serious, if he's playing it straight, it's fucking terrible. <laughs> there yeah. were just so many times when he didn't need to speak. Yeah, it would have been more impactful than like him doing his guttural noises at the very end, tied up like on the floor. But <laughs> see, the thing with those like noises he was making was. It didn't look to me like the gag, like, in his mouth was, like, I don't know. Like, it wouldn't have jumbled his words. Like, it almost seemed like he was purposely slurring his words, which just made it even Mm. funnier to me. No. I agree. I rewatched it right before the ending, right before we got on, and he definitely could make noises. And just seeing Mm -hmm. him do that was pretty funny. And it's also such a simple mistake that you could have, like, I feel like someone should have caught that. You know what I mean? I don't know if you guys have seen the movie Marshall, um, but there's a good scene in there where someone's trying to say, it's basically like a uh, interrogation in a courtroom. And one of the lawyers is saying, oh, so you said you were bound and gagged. You couldn't scream for help. And she's like, yeah, I couldn't scream because I had a gag in my mouth. Like just a typical like bandana wrapped around the lips and tied behind the head. Um, and they demonstrate the lawyer basically puts on mm. a bandana like that and just starts screaming at the top of his lungs. He goes, I rest my case. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, Valley. So the whole reason we're here, silver linings, this movie, as we discussed, ends with basically Keanu getting caught or at least presumably caught yeah. and blackmailed, uh, to his wife that he cheated on her. Um, so, what is your silver lining for Knock Knock? Mine is if you ignore the rape, property damage, and all of the psycho shit, Evan had a pretty fun weekend. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. What about, what about no, you guys? No, what do you got? Well, no argument for me about that. Um, <laughs> no, I'm saying if you take all that stuff out, like uh, that's pretty rad. Michael, you don't have to give a silver lining, but if you got something you think uh, we should is noteworthy, let us know. I think I said it earlier. I just really don't. I think at the end, he's honestly fine. Like that is if I was his wife and I came home to my entire house being just defaced, all of my artwork destroyed, all my kids stuff everywhere. And then I find my husband in the backyard buried with his head sticking above the ground, you know, and then later you'd find out he was constrained. He was it was a home invasion and he was raped and he could easily play that off. Um, and again, with the video that they have posting to Facebook, 
like I said, there is a continuity error and it makes it seem like he's into it because he does say certain lines like, oh yeah, fuck me, you little whore, that he didn't say in the actual mm-hmm. like scene itself. Yeah, right. And, he, and again, that he's tied up. You could again just say like, oh, he was raped and he could he could get off with it relatively scot-free. The girls didn't do it. They, like you said, they were their children. They yeah. clearly didn't think this through. They just kind of went for it. And that's evident in the second and third acts because I don't, in regards to silver linings, that is the silver lining. He isn't as screwed as the movie tries to make you think he is. Yeah. If you think yeah. about it logically. So that was initially going to be my silver lining is basically there's enough evidence there that Evan can get off mm-hmm. free. Um, or at least for the most part, he can, he can prove his innocence. Um, uh, you threw me a curveball. Because you actually took my silver lining, but it's mm-hmm. fine because <laughs> no, 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 it's good. This this gives us more options. We'll have three silver linings, which is unheard of for the show. Wow. Um, I'm gonna go a little bit more, a little bit more meta with mine. Um, oh God. So <laughs> if I'm kind of the opposite of Mally, if you take everything that happened to him, <laughs> it makes for a pretty good origin story for a revenge tale, which is essentially. How we mentioned this could be a prequel to John Wick. <laughs> it makes for a pretty good story of how he can get his revenge on these two girls, which I I would pay to see a knock knock too. I would pay to see <laughs> Evans Evans redemption. <laughs> well, you know, you you know, I'm just gonna save it for the last topic that we have on the list here. Let's okay. Keep going. Let's okay. They do steal his dog. I, I saw yeah. that watching it the second time. Yeah, I, I was going to try to say, I don't remember exactly what that happened to the what dog. That is what confirmed but... in my head that this leads into John Wick. <laughs> so in my head canon, this is a prequel to John Wick, oh, which yeah. is a good a good silver lining because he's going to get his revenge. Don't worry. Maybe there's like a John Wick 0.5 that takes place before the first movie that explains <laughs> not only how he gets back at these girls, but how he gets his dog back. An and adorable dog. How that marriage so ends, and he's actually married to the girl from John Wick 1. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. So wow. that is Knock Knock from 2015, directed by Eli Roth, Mally. Um we always like to offer our listeners a pick-me-up movie alternative, a movie they can watch after Knock Knock that's somewhat similar in either vein or in themes or features an actor from this movie. So what movie do you think people should watch after Knock Knock that can bring them back up? Um, I'm going just for a sheer white-knuckle thrill ride of a movie. Speed. All right. I like <laughs> Speed. <laughs> But uh, no, Speed is a fantastic choice. That's a very... I, I just recently rewatched that movie. It holds up so well. Dude, it's... Uh, the cast is fantastic in that movie. Yeah. God, yeah. Dennis Hopper, fucking at the top of his game, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <sighs> All right. Um, What about you, Michael? Do you have an idea for a movie that people could watch after Knock Knock? So I, I was trying to think of a relatable movie that ends well, and... I, I really couldn't, um, but I did find an Easter egg that you guys might enjoy and that there is actually an alternate ending to this movie. Uh, wh- Wait, oh, okay. I don't whoa, know if you guys whoa, noticed this. What? Before you even tell me, this is just further evidence that we are terrible at our job, Mally. We never do any research. <laughs> so the, the, the alternate ending, and I think honestly is completely better, the girls are at a new victim's house. They've swapped clothes and hairstyles. Um, Ana de Armas has long brunette hair, and she's wearing what I think it was Genesis was wearing in John Wick's house or Keanu Reeves' house. <laughs> John um, Wick's house. And he actually pulls up to the house, and it reveals that I don't know how he's tracking them. So he so he he, he finds them at another house on a rainy night, and they're inside. They have him hung up, strung, noosed, and everything on top of a chair, and they're like teasing him, like pushing the new the the dad the husband whatever when there's a knock at the door and unfortunately it doesn't end then it's like another 15 seconds of like who's there and they're obviously scared and it's implied that keanu reeves is about to walk in and fuck Mm. some shit up i wish it would have ended with the two just the two knocks because i was trying to find like all right what's the title of the movie why is it knock knock and there there is that like joke i guess that they do when they have them buried but to me, that alternative ending, if it would have ended with just a knock-knock with him at the door and the two girls look, 
that would have been like so perfect. Was this fi- this is actually filmed, right? Actually filmed. It's a real scene. Uh, yeah, oh, I wonder wow. if it's just like a DVD extra or something. I think it was. Yeah, you'd have to watch like that's crazy. I didn't even know. I've seen this movie twice now. I had no idea there was an alternative. Yeah, and to it's it. a way better ending. Um, <laughs> All right, well, I got my pick me up movie alternative, uh, Hard Candy. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> past episode, uh, definitely, if you enjoy home invasion movies and black metal movies, you'll enjoy our episode about that one. Um, I mentioned it earlier, uh, and it's actually a horror film, which is rare. We really don't pick horror movies as uh, pick me up alternatives, but I'm going to go with Last House on the Left just because it's the ending I wanted from this movie, which I didn't get, which is. The girl that is just straight up raped and abused in the beginning of the movie gets her revenge on these fuckers that did it to her. And call it rape or not in this movie, Keanu definitely deserves some retribution for what happened. Um, I, to what level he also deserves some some punishment, I don't know. Because like I said, I, I don't know what the movie's trying to tell me. But I think last off on, on the left, if you finish Knock Knock and you are hoping – or we're, we're hoping that Keanu gets uh, his uh, redemption on these girls and, he, and the fact that he does. And you might enjoy Last House on the Left because you'll get to see what that could look like. I think there's like even a shotgun in some dude's ass in that movie, if I remember <laughs> right. Um, so, yeah. Thanks, guys. This was a real interesting episode um <laughs> uh, yeah if you enjoyed this discussion please subscribe if you're right now on itunes we're also on spotify google play stitcher youtube anywhere you can listen to podcasts we're on there so if you could subscribe and leave us a rating that would be awesome uh you can like us on facebook facebook.com slash the silver linings playlist we're also on instagram at the silver linings playlist and twitter at tslp podcast that's the silver linings playlist podcast you can give us a follow we post we try to post daily on there with our uh, social media connoisseur my fiance priscilla she runs our instagrams and twitter um (laughs) And we finally joined this century. I know, like halfway through season two, we're like, yeah, we should probably get on Twitter and Instagram. <laughs> I don't know um, why we waited this long. And have our first guest. Michael, you were an awesome guest. Thank you for uh, coming on, by the way. Thanks, man. I, I had a lot of fun. I love talking about movies, and I really dig the unique take that you guys go with on this podcast. And it's trying to you know, find fucked up endings and see what's in them. I think it's super unique, and I can definitely see this idea catching on. You guys are both very fun to talk to. Well, yeah, we'll have to have you on a future episode. We're not terribly good at the whole silver lining part, but like, whatever. No. <laughs> In fact, the silver lining is literally the least covered part of the episode if you look at like duration. <laughs> um, also, I would, like I said, I would love to hear some females cut, like jump back at me and clap back. I would love to hear why I'm wrong. Please go on our subreddit. It's reddit.com slash r slash the silver linings playlist. Oh, oh, no, I'm sorry. There's no the. It's just Silver Linings Playlist. Reddit.com slash r slash Silver Linings Playlist. Please go on there. You'll find the official discussion thread for this episode. You can tell me why I'm wrong. And you can also enter the contest code we gave you earlier for a chance to win a free Blu-ray. Real simple. But like I said, I would love to hear what you got to say about it. Um, Mally, do you want to give us a clue for what our next week's episode is going to be? Oh, yes, I do. All right. So next week's clue, good people deserve good things. I like it. Boom. And, uh, the, the, I was given give another little kind of a clue. This movie is kind of similar to the one that we're going to be doing next week in terms of uh, moral ambiguity. And hospitality. So yeah, good little, little tie-ins there. Bit. But uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, again, thank you, Michael, for coming on. Please uh, feel free to come back on whenever we can get you back on. Um, Mally, is there anything else you want to talk about or you want to sign off? Uh, thank you for joining us. And as always, Excelsior. Excelsior. Oh, where? Oh, oh, you messed <laughs> <Stole> it up. <laughs> oh. They're never going to match up awkward. anymore. <laughs>